Welcome to Inside Sim Racing. On today's show, first up, top stories. We head to New Jersey where a sim racer sat on the outside of the front row in the ARCA Remax series. iRacing announces a partnership with Chevy. Codemasters also had an announcement about their new downloadable content pack called 8-Ball. Simpin talks to the community, then we go to Sean's force feedback tips. Our new LFS reporter, Michael Passingham, this week's segment of the Mod Squad. And also stay tuned to win a copy of GTR Evolution. Here's your host, Jessica Lopez. Welcome to Inside Sim Racing. Today is Tuesday, September the 30th, and this is our 27th episode. We have a lot of stuff on today's show, as you just overheard. But before we get to the top stories of the week, those of you that are fans of SRT Live may have recently noticed that we've discontinued the show. We apologize for the short notice, but it was just a bit too much for us to do that along with this show, Inside Sim Racing, and our special reports. What we have decided to do is air this show at a designated time each and every week. It will air sometime over the weekend between Friday and Monday, but we're going to let you, our viewers, decide. So go to the poll at our website and vote on the time slot that fits you best. And we'll be in the chat room while the show airs to talk sim racing with you guys. Our show will also air on Mogulus, Blip, and YouTube, of course. So you can subscribe to our YouTube channel to be notified instantly. Or you can find the calendar at our site for the schedule of upcoming shows. Before today's top story, do you guys remember those headphones from Audio FX that sent shivers down Sean's spine? Go to the e-dimensional banner at InsideSimRacing.tv and check them out along with some other great products available for sim racers. That's the e-dimensional banner at InsideSimRacing.tv. This past weekend over at the New Jersey Motorsports Park, sim racer Parker Kligerman made his ARCA Remax Series debut in the number 77 Cunningham Driver Development Dodge and sat on the outside of the front row in qualifying. He attributed ARCA Sim Racing to his success. And guess what guys, he's only 17 years old. Can you believe that? He ran in the top 10 all day and finished in sixth after the rain came in and stopped the race on lap 48 of 67. Congratulations, Parker. We here at Inside Sim Racing wish you the best on your way to becoming a big named cup driver. If you're wondering when the track will become available to all of you out there, it's currently being redone with GPS data. The version he tested was done with CAD. Okay, so iRacing.com has licensed and is in the process of building three Chevrolet's primary stock car racing vehicles, the Silverado truck, the Monte Carlo SS, and the Impala SS. The Silverado will be available to iRacing members beginning October 15th, and on that same day, it will replace the Silver Crown car as the C-Class vehicle in the Oval Series, and the Silver Crown car will move up to the B-Class. When the COT debuts next year, it is scheduled to become the A-Class Oval Racer. So, looks like you'll be able to complete a full NASCAR style career sometime next year in iRacing. You can read all the details about this announcement in the news section over at iRacing.com. The racing versions of the Monte Carlo and the Impala will soon follow in 2009. Codemasters has announced the future release of the first downloadable content pack for Race Driver Grid. The 8-Ball pack is coming this autumn for the Xbox 360 and the PS3. It is set to feature 8 thrilling new cars to race and 2 new online events to compete in. So, the 8 cars are the McLaren F1 GTR, said to be the only GT car to win the Mons. TVR Cabrera Speed 12, which smashes past 60 miles per hour in just under three seconds. The Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution X, Honda S2000, Nissan GTR SG2008, and the VW Nardo. And they threw in an old school car, the 1971 Racing Edition Pontiac Firebird Trans Am, and this American legend will be added to Grid's exclusive group of muscle cars. Last but not least, the Volvo C30. Need I say any more, guys? All eight cars will be available to drive in the game's race day mode and online races. In addition to these great cars, 
The pack will make two multiplayer events available, set on existing circuits from across Grid's three continents. Pricing for the pack will be confirmed at its launch. For further information, visit racedrivergrid.com. On SRT Live, we announced that members of the official GTR Evolution Forum at RSC were able to post questions to the developers over at Simbin. We chose a few, and here they are. Are there any additional expansion packs being developed for GTR Evo after the STCC? Their answer, short and sweet, yes. So it looks like the G Motor 2 engine is not yet dead at Simbin. And here's another. Is Steam's anti-cheat bulletproof? If so, how? And if not, how can we improve this? Answer, so far the industry has failed to provide a 100% cheat-free environment and I would say that it is more or less impossible to achieve. Not even a closed environment like Xbox Live can be considered 100% cheat-free, sadly. And yes, that is sad. What's up with all the cheating at a video game, guys? A video game. I mean, come on. If you can't beat someone or just have fun on skill alone, pick another hobby. Okay, on to some positive news. It's great to see that Simbin stepped up and is answering questions from the community. Other Sim developers should take note and maybe do something similar. It's time to take a quick pit stop. Up next, Sean's got some force feedback tips for you guys. We were having a conversation with a sim racer named Courtney Smith that told us that he used a G25 wheel but turned off all force feedback because he didn't like it. We were shocked and Darren gave him some settings to try and now he's using the force feedback that he paid for. It makes us think maybe more people are having difficulties in this area so here's our force feedback tips for the Logitech wheel. I'm going to start off with the Windows profiler and how I set this up for me either selecting an existing setup or click and make a new one. Here you can set the path of the game so the profiler can launch it, select an icon, and the title for the profile. Next go to the Options tab and select Global Profiler Setting. On the top part of this menu, be sure to click on Apply Profile to Games Automatically. This will allow the profiler to use the specific profile and all of its settings for each sim launched. Now go to the Edit tab and select Specific Game Settings. This tab is where you can affect the way the wheel operates. At the top, check the box for Use Special Force Feedback Device Settings. That means the profile we have loaded, and in this case for our factor. The first slider is Overall Effect Strength, which is pretty self-explanatory. I set the slider to 100 in the profiler, and then we'll make adjustments in the sim for the amount of force I want delivered by each mod individually. Next is the Spring Effect Strength that is basically allowing the Logitech software to do additional behavior and you don't want it. Turn it to zero. Damper effect strength is also allowing Logitech to throw in some effects that you don't want. So likewise, turn this one to zero as well. The next one down is a click box for enabling center spring and right below that a slider for a mount. I can tell you that some sims and some wheels might want that box clicked, but for Logitech controls and running R factor, you want to click the enabling but move the slider to zero. If you are feeling oscillations in sims, it is often having this setting turned up that is the cause. The next section down is use special steering wheel settings. Click this button. This will make these settings for this sim profile only. Next is report combined pedals, which is for joysticks that have a braking gas on the same axis and they cancel them out. If you have that, 
then get a new wheel and make sure that you do not click on this button. Below that, you can set degrees of rotation for how far Logitech will allow the wheel to turn. In the case of a G25, that number is anywhere from 40 degrees all the way up to 900. In the case of R-Factor, I typically use 340 or slightly a larger amount depending on the car I'm driving. For those of you who prefer not to use the Logitech Profiler, all of these changes can be made in Windows Game Controller Panel. Click on Properties for the wheel and you can make changes. All the same sliders are there in a slightly different order, but there is a reason that I use the Profiler and it is this. I can set changes for each sim as well as map buttons outside of the sim. Our factors chat still does not exist, so I use TeamSpeak and the sim doesn't control it. So I will map a button on my wheel to do that task. Click on the button that you want to control and select new command. You can then record the keystroke for that command. Now you just have to remember not to program that button in the game. And when in R Factor, there are only a handful of actual force feedback settings. The top one being type of force feedback and obviously we want a wheel. Then you have force feedback effects. You'll use this to determine the amount of effects being transmitted. And lastly is the force feedback strength, which you can put at any level you feel is right for you. And remember, for some reason to use negative force feedback in R Factor. I have no idea why, but in our factor it needs this. I hope this helps and look forward to more segments like this one coming up in the future. I'm Sean Cole for SRT. For all of you out there who asked for help with force feedback, we hope that that helps. Anyone else out there has any additional questions or needs help with anything, please feel free to post that on our forum and we'll get those answers to you as soon as possible. Next up we have the Mod Squad. Derek Gage here for the Mod Squad and just downloaded the templates for GTR Evolution. They just became available at the GTR Evolution site and I don't know what the heck I'm doing. I haven't painted a car honestly since NASCAR 2 I think and man it's definitely looking a lot tougher nowadays. Uh, speaking of which though, so you can go to get the templates now at gtr-evolution.com. They're available right now. God there's a ton of them. 107 megabytes worth of uh, templates. so. All the cars that are available for, for Evo are in there. Um, but you know what, these guys hit me up the other day, Modal Speed Shop uh, and Paint Shop, and you can get to them by going to modalspeed.dutchberserks.com, and I'm gonna put it up on the screen here for you guys. But uh, some killer paint schemes for GTR2, GTR Evo, so I thought I'd give a shout out to these guys. We don't talk about painters much, and you know what? They're a big part of our community, and you know what? I hate to say that we haven't talked about them, and they, they definitely deserve some credit. For some of the beautiful work, I mean, as you can see some of the stuff scrolling by, you may not be able to see it that closely. I'll put some screenshots up for you guys as well, but uh, yeah, some really cool stuff. Uh, so anyway, that's what's going on in the uh, GTR Evo world. Uh, R Factor Central, was over there and uh, downloaded Singapore. And uh, I'm gonna run some footage for you guys right now of me running uh, the CTDP mod at uh, Singapore. So this is a new track, just came out within the last week or two. They've already updated it once or twice. So here's a little bit of uh, footage from Singapore and some sounds of the F1 cars. All right, there's my portion of the Mod Squad. Over to Sean now for his. Well, for my portion of the Mod Squad, I wanted to focus on some dirt racing. There's been a ton of momentum in the dirt racing world and many people wishing for the next Richard Burns rally. R-Factor is quickly becoming the dirt sim of choice with many, many mods coming online to fulfill that niche. The latest entries are a couple of ovals. First up being BRL Silver Dollar. This track is a small oval built in Northern California. It is a nice local dirt track with plenty of bumper to help you stay on the track. The track was made by Bill Malicote and Jason Ray and is a quarter mile in length. A little simplistic in design, but I love the way the track drove and you were always on the wheel driving sideways. 
Another dirt oval to come out recently is the dirt track at Texas. This dirt oval is a bit bigger, four tenths of a mile. It's just enough length to actually have a straightaway and carry enough speed into the corners that can get you in trouble. The track is plenty large and will make for some fun races with mini cars. The exterior of this track is also very simplistic and I could barely find the way onto the track without disqualification. But once I did, I found this track to be a blast. 321 Development did some fine work here and with a little polishing we'll have one of the better dirt ovals available. It's nice to see a bunch of dirt ovals coming out. There are also many dirt oval cars as well. As time goes on, and maybe some of the quality going up a bit, I can see dirt oval racing making a big impact. But ovals aren't the only place to run in the dirt. This week we also see a new rally cross track. This time it's called Drovian RX by Team Rallyist. This is a typical but fantasy rally cross track. And for those of you who don't know Rallycross, it's crazy. Rally cars on a small time trial circuit, often with jumps. Trade the trees on the side of the road for cement barriers that are sure to end your day. Drobian has bumps, jumps, and transitions from dirt to concrete. I have driven the trucks, the buggies, and the rally cars, and all of them offered exciting laps. Again, the track is a little simplistic, with some road textures that need more massaging, but a nice effort and a fun track nonetheless. All three of these tracks can be downloaded at R Factor Central. And you sim companies out there take notice. The dirt racing world is making some noise. So who is it that will make the next great dirt sim? A lot of us are waiting. All right, Live for Speeders. We got Michael Passingham coming up next to deliver the Live for Speed news. But before we roll that, make sure to stay tuned. When we return, I'll have Darren and Sean here in the studio with me. We're gonna close out the show, tell you what we're gonna be up to next, and also we got some contests going on. So make sure to stay tuned. Let's roll the Michael Passingham Live for Speed News. Good morning, good afternoon and good evening and welcome to my Sim Racing Tonight live report on Live for Speed. If you're wondering why I'm outside, well it's because I can't afford a studio unlike Sim Racing Tonight. They've got a very expensive and nice looking studio, but I can't afford that. So I'm using nature as my studio. It's beautiful, isn't it? Here's what's coming up on today's show. We'll be looking at my favourite LFS movie of the year so far, but first... Now it's time for my regular look at LFS add-ons. This week, Setup Grid in-game. There's nothing more annoying than missing the start of a race because you couldn't find a setup. You're all ready, you're all ready to race, you're all excited, but then you realise the only setup you have is for the oval when you're racing on a track like South City. Usually you'd have to minimise live for speed, open up your internet browser and then open up your favourite setup finding area and then download the setup and then put it in your setups folder and open up live for speed, go into the pits and change the setup. Well, that's set to change now with new setup grid in game. Let me show you how it works. Setup Grid are the new setup site on the block. They've been around for a few months and a while back they released setup grid in game. An excellent tool. Now I'm going to show you how to use it, or at least show you what it does. First of all, you download it, obviously. Okay, so now you've opened up the Setup Grid program, you select where your LFS installation is. So I would go to C slash games slash LFS Z slash that's it. Then I choose an InSim port for which it will connect to. It's the standard port 60,000 that I will connect to. It sits down at the bottom in your uh, taskbar, just waiting for you to do something. So, now let me just read the instructions and find out what you do. Now once you've configured this, you must launch Live for Speed through Setup Grid. You can't launch Live for Speed by itself, you must launch it through Setup Grid. So you go to your uh, you go to your taskbar and you launch Live for Speed from the Setup Grid in-game icon, then it should work. Okay, so here I am in Live for Speed. So now all I need to do is type O slash O setup. And a list of setups will 
<laughs> well, okay, so that didn't quite work because the combo I'm using doesn't have any setups on Live for Speed. So let's make a combo that does have some sets. Okay, so now we're at a combo that uh, Setup Grid does have on its archives. Let's have a look to see what we can find. We type slash o setup. Let's see what comes up. Here's a nice list of setups you can see. So I can look at the, the comments that people have written on them. There's two pages worth, in fact. Look, there we go. Very good. Now, it tells you what controller they're designed for. It tells you who made them. And it gets you a big, nice, green Get Set button. So if you just click the Get Set button, that is what you will do. You just click the setup, then you click Get Set. And that's it. The setup will be downloaded. So now I just go to the pits, select the setup, and away we go. Simple as that. So what do I think of Setup Grid in-game? Well, I think it and the overall site are very good. With over a thousand setups and plenty more to come, it's a very good site. It's got hot lap sets, sprint sets, endurance sets, layout sets and miscellaneous sets for the little fun ones. It's a site full of variety and plenty of decent setups in there. A while back they held a competition to win money if you uh, submitted good setups and that went well. That caused a lot of setups to come in so it's a very good resource. Give it a bit more time, I'm sure the uh, grid will nearly be filled with all the setups that everyone wants. As for setup grid in game, it's totally unique. It's, it really is an excellent tool. Uh, it saves a lot of time and gives you exactly what you want, just like from the website, apart from it's in Live for Speed. Brilliant. Absolutely genius. Thank you, 3ID. A very useful tool. <laughs>
at the E... E for All e Expo. E for All Expo. We'll be there this weekend. It's October 3rd through 5th at the Los Angeles Convention Center. You can find out more information on their website. Yep, eforallexpo.com. So if you live in the Los Angeles area, make sure to come out and hang with us. It's going to be lots of fun, and we're going to be giving away lots of games. Yep. All you have to know is all three of our names. So yep. come out and join us. I'm sure hers won't be hard to remember. <laughs> So yeah, come out and join us. It'd be cool. Hopefully, we'll uh, we'll meet some sim racers out there. And we get, there's some cool stuff to check out besides the uh, the gaming that's going on that you see on the site. Check out the uh, vendor list that's that's going on there. There's gonna be lots of cool stuff. Uh, besides that, uh, we're gonna have uh, some reviews this week. I got a hold of Pure for the uh, PS3, and wouldn't have thought Disney Interactive was gonna come out with such a cool game. But there's so much adrenaline. Yeah. Oh man, Pure Adrenaline, man. It was it was awesome. And Sean Grid, speaking of Pure Adrenaline. <laughs> yeah, I've been talking about it for weeks, but Grid, I'm real excited about this. I've been having too much fun playing it. I've got my review. Darren's got his scores. We've got that coming up on Thursday. Yeah, the guys have been playing Grid for quite some time now, so I look forward to those reviews. Um, that about does it for this episode, uh, 27th episode of Inside Sim Racing. We thank you guys out there for joining us. I'm Jessica Lopez. This is Darren Ganji, Sean Cole. And uh, we're going to actually go out today with a video from Stuart Fields. This is the FSR Formula Sim Racing, their last event. Fantastic video. So have a great week, everyone. Yeah. Bye. Yeah, well, Stuart, man, he makes some cool stuff. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Formula Sim Racing headed to the legendary Spa Frackershop circuit in Belgium for round 13 of the World Championship. Pole position was taken by reigning drivers world champion Bruno Marquez, with Blair Disley joining him on the front row. Lauren Kearsmaker took third, with Patrick DeWitt lining up alongside him in fourth. The best start was made by DeWitt, who powered into second position behind Marquez. It all got very messy behind as the expected carnage into the Lasso's hairpin caused damage to several cars. The battles continued all throughout the field during the third few laps with drivers consistently trading positions. Back at the front, Marcos set about building a big enough lead over DeWitt to make his free stop strategy successful. DeWitt made things easier for Marcos when he spun at the final chicane, handing second place to Lauren Kearsmakers. The Twister Racing driver narrowly held onto the position after the first round of pit stops, but DeWitt took the second place back soon afterwards. Bruno Marquez wasn't able to build the big enough gap he needed and rejoined after his final stop in second place just behind Patrick DeWitt. The pair battled hard before Marquez overtook DeWitt with a superb manoeuvre going into Le Comp on lap 38 and went on to take his 20th victory in Formula Sim Racing. It was a crucial victory for Bruno Marquez which puts him back into the lead of the Drivers' Championship. Second place was still Patrick DeWitt's best result of the season and Kearsmaker took another podium position for Twister Racing in third. In the Drivers' standings, Bruno Marquez now has 74 points, four more than the absent Roy Colby. Andre Kunschman remains third with John Eric Saxon and Patrick DeWitt tied in fourth position. Go Speed Racing increased their lead in the team's championship to 13 points over Twister Racing with Veralda Racing keeping in touch in third. The next round is on September 21st and you can catch all the race action live on PSR TV where the action will be called by Michael Lamb, Sean Shroud and Dennis Hurd.